you know, liberals seem to have a hard time understanding this, but when it comes to an economy, it's like a lake. If you throw a rock into a lake, it ripples out. Now, there's going to be some areas of the lake more affected by that than not, but when you throw a giant boulder into it, you know, that affects the whole lake. You can't just affect one little part of the economy. It's all interconnected. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. I didn't touch anything, I swear! Oh, time, what did you do? It wasn't my fault! That's right, gang. It is time for yet another edition of Breaking the Internet. So we are going to go through some memes today, which I know surprises nobody. Usually this thing winds up being either videos or memes. Uh, but yeah, there's been memes circling around here recently. And it has to do with the recent gas prices and blaming Joe Biden for them. So I wanted to ask this question if these are actually true. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of these. There's been literally dozens, if not hundreds, of these things floating around. So I just picked two random ones. Uh, the you can see here. This is the the kind of claim that you'll see. Um, you know, Trump with the dollar twenty two gas versus Biden with the five fifty nine gas, and then over there. Uh, you see, in case you don't forget, and then on the other one, for those of you listening on the audio-only podcast, there's another one here that says, don't blame me when you voted for this, and it's got $4.27 gas, and then, because I voted for this underneath it, and it has $1.74 gas. So, are these things fair? Are they really um, what they are cracked up to be? Because there are some people justifiably giving some blowback on this. For example, there's been some rebuttal on this that it says it's been to point out that the low prices were due to the pandemic when President Donald Trump, they're, they're saying these are Trump's gas prices. There is an element of truth to that. And we're going to go over that and go over exactly how much of a difference that makes. Because when you look at those gas prices, those are extremely low gas prices. And so part of that had to do with the collapse of demand. And with the pandemic, there just weren't that many people driving because you couldn't go anywhere. And so you had a, a global drop in demand, which meant we had way more supply than demand, ergo the low gas prices. And so they're saying, well, this is just, it's because of the pandemic. And so those things aren't reflective of reality. And you also saw this rebuttal as well, which I actually thought was kind of humorous. So you'll see this one here. Uh, the first picture, it says 2008 and it's got gas at 4.59 a gallon. And underneath, it's a picture of a calm-looking, I guess that's a chihuahua. You, you dumb libs, the president doesn't control gas prices. And then right next to it, 2021, there's an angry chihuahua going, why is Joe Biden doing this to me and seeing the gas prices at 279 And so that one is probably a little bit dated because gas hasn't been 279 anywhere in a few months. So I'm not sure exactly what they were pulling that from. I'm, I'm sure it was in the Biden administration. I remember when gas was around there. I think that was like a, about maybe May, April, something like that. So it has happened. I'm guessing that gas price is somewhere in the Obama, or Obama. I mean, it really is the Obama administration, but the Biden administration. Anyway, so First of all, political hypocrisy is always funny. I don't care who it's aimed towards, and that one's kind of aimed at Bush. There are people that were kind of uh, offering excuses for President Bush when the gas prices were in the you know, four, four and a half dollar range. And now that Biden's gas prices, which, you know, most recently when I checked, gas price was floating around 325 here in the state of Alabama. So, there were people that were complaining about the are complaining about the Biden gas prices now, not complaining about the Bush gas prices. But I will say this: I think every single president gets more credit and more blame for gas prices than they actually do, because they don't control it, but they do have an influence over it, and so that can't be discounted. And the thing about the political hypocrisy of people doing that, here's the thing: I know that there are people that were absolutely frustrated and eat up with Joe Biden's gas prices, and I'm one of them. But when it was Bush, weren't necessarily all that bothered by it. 
But I contend that those people are a minority. Because I can remember on many occasions when I was in college and a teenager in high school, which would have been in the, the Bush years, I remember quite a few times, actually, where I would hear conservatives at different rallies, that kind of thing, complain about gas prices and specifically complain about George W. Bush not doing enough to resolve them. I remember I was actually at a gathering where the Secretary of Agriculture for George W. Bush, so it was, I'm not saying there, there might not have been any Democrats in there. This happened at Tuskegee. I'm not saying that there were no Democrats there, but it seems unlikely that a bunch of Democrats would have come out to see the Secretary of Agriculture for a Republican president. So I'm guessing the room was at the very least mostly Republicans. And I happen to know that the guy that asked this question is a Republican or at least a conservative because I actually knew who the guy was. He stood up and the question that he asked when it got to the Q&A thing was he asked why George W. Bush was not doing enough to solve gas prices and talked about how ridiculous they are. And when he said that, the room full of Republicans cheered. So I don't think this was even a majority opinion within the Republican Party that George W. Bush bore no blame for the high gas prices. So the, the meme is somewhat constructed on a false premise that nobody on the right had any issue with gas prices back in the George W. Bush years. I just don't think that's correct. I'm sure that there were some because there's always some political people that to them, politics is just a sport like pulling for Auburn or Alabama in football. And so they will defend anything that their team does and attack anything the other team does. Yes, those people do exist. I understand that. And it is funny. I actually like making fun of those people, regardless of which direction I'm making fun of them on. But I'm just saying, as a whole, I don't think Republicans as a party were just letting Bush off the hook left and right for those gas prices. So that's a little bit of a misnomer there. And the big question here, because this is what we really want to get to, is, is it true? Is this actually a correct statistic to show those gas prices side by side with one another? And I mean this both ways. Because, frankly, not to get ahead of myself, but I thought that both memes contained a, a decent amount of misinformation. So the way that we're going to resolve this is let's just look at the facts. Let's just look at the data because you guys know that is always my solution to these kinds of things. All right, so these are average gas prices from the year 2017 to 2021. And you'll notice that the reason that I'm using these stats is because it would contain years that had no pandemic. And so now we're comparing apples to apples as opposed to just looking at pandemic prices versus post-pandemic prices where there's an increase in demand. So these are the Trump years. January to October, because October just ended. So I also wanted to take out seasonality. So instead of just using whole years, we're only going to use January to October since this year only has those months to compare it to. So January to October with Donald Trump, the average gas price in those months, $2.51. January to October 2018, $2.86. January to October 2019, $2.69. And finally, January to October 2020, now this was after the pandemic, $2.26. So you'll see that the pandemic certainly had an effect on gas prices if you compare it to the other years that Trump was in office. But really not that much, and while he did have a slightly higher year on gas prices in 2018, that was presumably because of the tariffs and some issues that happened with the trade war, after his drilling policies went into effect and we see his policy sort of settle in, we see it on the decline, and I don't know what it would have been in 2020 had it not been that way, but you know, presumably it would have been pretty close to the year before or maybe even a little bit higher or lower. We can only speculate on that because we only have three years to compare it to, but the point is Trump's average gas price is somewhere in the 260, 270-ish range, something like that. Now let's look at Joe Biden's numbers. January to October 2021, $3.02. And by the way, I should also note on this that while this is the correct figure here for Joe Biden's gas prices, I want to also bring up that this thing has been on an upward trajectory. So yes, this average is about roughly 21 cents more than even Trump's highest year on averaging gas prices, January to October. However, the difference is 
Joe Biden also has part of his pandemic prices playing into this. And so some of the pandemic prices, those really low gas prices, lower than any of the ones that we're seeing on this chart, were still around when he took office. And so he's got gas prices in the low $2 range, like $2 to $2.30 in January, February, March, and that's when they started to climb. The thing that is different about the Trump years than it is from the Biden years is in the Biden years, oil prices and gas prices are on a steady increase the entire time. You know, in, in the Trump years, they fluctuate a little bit. They get a little higher in the summer. They get a little lower in the fall, in the spring. And then there's a little spike around holidays or whatever. Not so in the Biden administration. He started out really low and just kept climbing higher and higher and higher and higher. And so that's a, a marked difference in this. So it's actually even worse than it looks. However, what I just did was I showed you a fair comparison. Because people that were showing you the $1.79 gas or whatever, those are people that are Trump cheerleaders that are just trying to paint him in the best possible light. And, you know, I wanted Trump to win the last election. I'm not anti-Trump on that sense. But what I am saying is, if you look at the actual numbers and do a fair comparison, the numbers stack up pretty good anyway. Not, not as drastic as that meme would show. But you can show the actual numbers to people and then you're not misleading them and they still get the point. See, if the Joe, if Joe Biden's uh, oil policies had an effect on that, that makes a difference. But if we were just looking at raw prices under the two presidents, they would seem as though Joe Biden would be doing fine if you know they were artificially lowered for the pandemic and he brought the gas prices back up only to pre-pandemic levels. In other words, like the January to October for 2019 that Trump had $2.70. Okay, well, if it had been around there, that would have been not great. And we probably would have complained about it because you know we got used to the, the lower gas prices. But that would have been pretty comparable to what Donald Trump averaged in the same time span. But that ain't what happened. They went up by a substantial amount. And they got to pre-pandemic levels and kept climbing. That's the difference. And so while it is fair to blame at least part of this on Joe Biden, you don't have to fudge the numbers and use the two most extreme examples that you can find to be able to make this point. And if, you, if you're honest with your, your math and honest with your statistics, you're more likely to get somebody to actually agree with you. But luckily, you know, Joe Biden was able to wake up from his nap and, and take his Metamucil and explain exactly why gas prices are as bad as they are. So let's listen to the president's excuse here. First of all, the significant reason why prices are up is because of COVID affecting the supply chain. I mean, I know you, I'm not trying to be instructive. I know you know this. Number one. No, exactly. Number two, um, if you take a look at, uh, you know, gas prices and you take a look at uh, oil prices, uh, that is a consequence of, thus far, the refusal of, uh, of uh, Russia or, uh, or the OPEC nations to uh, pump more oil. Yeah. So it's all Russia's fault and all OPEC's fault. I tend to remember that it wasn't that long ago that Joe Biden actually approved an oil pipeline, you know, after killing the Keystone Pipeline from Canada to America that would have helped with this, that he actually and his administration approved and went through with a Russian pipeline to Germany, which should have decreased oil prices because it cuts out part of their transportation fee, and so the oil companies that are pumping things out of Russia would be better off. You know who denied that request multiple times? The Trump administration. So the Trump administration that was supposed to be just, a, you know, a Russian's cat's paw, just, you know, Putin's over there with the strings like the puppet master just pulling his strings and making Trump do whatever he wants to. That was the sort of the idea that the media was trying to sell to people what was going on. Yet he denied Putin having that because it would be a, comp a competition for American oil and for other oil producers around the world. That he doesn't want to approve, but then Joe Biden comes in and approves it and somehow he's the one that's not in Russia's pocket. How much sense does that make? But getting off of that for a second, he explains that really the people to blame 
are Russia and the ocean nations. Oh, really? Well, then why didn't Trump have the same problem before the pandemic? I mean, we still had Russia and OSHA around then. I mean, they those two things are more than two years old. So what was going on there? See, the thing is, the reason that these are different, because the Russia and, and OSHA nations production was roughly the same. They might have gone up a little bit because of competition, but what's actually happening here is that with Trump's policy, where he was not only in favor of the Keystone Pipeline, but more importantly, uh, was in favor of oil companies and, and wanted to give them more drilling permits and moved us towards energy efficiency, we were actually self-sufficient on energy with our own oil for the first time in history, a feat that even George Bush said was completely impossible and we'll never get there. We were actually completely energy independent. And because of that, other countries had to pump more oil to lower the prices to compete with American oil. You see, that's how you solve the problem. You hit them in the pocketbook. So President Biden acting like he's just this helpless, feeble weakling, which I guess is pretty easy for him because that's what he actually is, but acting like he has absolutely no control over the gas prices and can't do a dang thing about oil and uh, about Russia and, and OSHA not pumping more oil. Oh, I can't, I just can't do anything. Is it pudding time yet? That that's that's Biden. He he has no. It, he acts as though there's nothing he can do about this. But here's the thing, because it's always fair. Like I said, presidents get both more blame and more credit for oil prices than they probably should. So now we must ask ourselves the question, is there anything the Biden administration actually did that caused these increases? Well, there's a few things. First of all, he had several day one executive orders. First day of being the president of the United States, he ended all drilling on federal land. Day one said, no more drilling on federal land. We're not issuing any more permits. Now, the people that already were drilling on federal land, they had the ability to do that. But here's why that's even more detrimental. This happened right after the COVID pandemic. Remember, this was in January of this year. And so that was when oil prices were down and oil demand was lower. It was up a little bit. But what that meant was a whole bunch of the people that previously had been drilling weren't because there was an excess of supply and a dearth of demand. And so not only did this executive order hurt future, future drilling, it also meant that drilling that had gone on or would have gone on in a normal year was also halted. And so it was even more detrimental because of the timing and the day that he chose to do this. And then, of course, he, he nixed the Keystone Pipeline. Now, the obvious liberal rebuttal is, ah, you idiot. You're just bringing that up because you didn't like it. The Keystone Pipeline was never operational. It didn't have anything to do with gas prices. It is true that it was never operational. That is a fact. You, you didn't have an ounce of crude oil or any other kind of fuel coming tr through that pipeline before. But that doesn't mean it didn't affect gas prices. Because here's the thing. It has a chilling effect. Because if all of a sudden you have an administration that for no reason, especially considering that pipelines are significantly safer and more environmentally friendly than having legions of tanker trucks driving across the country to deliver crude oil and gasoline and, and train cars as well. Even though that's an environmentally friendly and safe method to transport oil, it sends a message to the oil companies, and this is exactly what the left wanted. It says to them, you might as well not invest because we're just going to nix your project anyway. You know, no matter how much money you've poured into it, no matter how many plans you've, you've put in place to plan around it, I'm sure that they had like refi refineries and other facilities that they had built along the trail of the Keystone Pipeline in anticipation for it, things like that. It doesn't matter. We're going to nix it even when it doesn't make any sense to do so. That was the message that it sent. So what do oil companies do then? Well, then they're afraid to spend more money. Then they're afraid to invest more because they think that the Biden administration at any time is just hanging over their head like the sword of Damocles and can just drop the hammer on them and get rid of their investment. They just lose that money. Well, when you have that, it creates a chilling effect. And oil companies aren't going to invest and drill as much as they would have normally. And so the people that are saying the Keystone Pipeline had nothing to do with oil prices, they're someone that doesn't understand the oil industry. The, every industry has some level of speculation, but the oil industry, it's like their stock and trade. 
They do everything based on speculation. And that destroyed speculation for the next several months because they didn't know what to expect out of the Biden administration. And considering how much hostility there is inside it, we, we had an Obama administration official just the other day saying in video, and unfortunately I didn't have time to pull the video before the show, but said in a video, you can go look it up. She actually said that um, the plan is to bankrupt the oil companies. Well, if you've got that administration in office, what do you think your investment's going to look like? You're just going to hunker down and do nothing and hope that something opens up and you, you just hope that you can survive the storm. So that's a, a bad counter argument. Also, the Afghanistan debacle has also destabilized the Middle East to some degree, which makes oil prices go up as well. And so that's part of it. But there's another big factor here that I don't think we've talked about enough, which, by the way, is just general inflation. So it's not just his policies that affected oil specifically. It's also his general policies that affected everything else. So let's look at the state of inflation right now in our country. So you see there, this is the consumer price index. So this is adjusted for inflation. This is adjusted for how much you're paying for normal everyday things. So gas prices, this is year over year from 2020 to 2021. Gas prices have increased 42.1%. We've already seen that. Shelter prices, in other words, housing, apartments, trailers, whatever, you know, if it's a shelter, this counts. That has increased 3.2%. Food prices have increased 4.6%. So you're spending about 4.6% more on your food, and that's the reason you're filling that at the, the, at the grocery store. And new vehicles have increased by 8.7%. All items, this is across the board, have increased 5.4%. Yes, the gas prices are in part Joe Biden's fault. I'm not saying he bears all of the blame, but he bears a significant amount of it. And him trying to just sort of push the... Uh, the responsibility off and saying, well, that's really because of Russia and because of OSHA. You see, what he wants to do is he doesn't want to pay the political penalty for his decisions because he halted the drilling. He got rid of the Keystone Pipeline because that's what his base was trying to encourage him to do. And then he doesn't want the gas prices to go up, but you can't have it both ways. Those two things do not coincide because the rest of the world also sets their supply and their gas prices based on what the U.S. does. You know, liberals seem to have a hard time understanding this, but when it comes to an economy, it's like a lake. If you throw a rock into a lake, it ripples out. Now, there's going to be some areas of the lake more affected by that than not, but when you throw a giant boulder into it, you know, that affects the whole lake. You can't just affect one little part of the economy. It's all interconnected. And so this is the problem that you run into. But what I would say to the people making the memes, you can certainly make the case, as I just have, that Joe Biden's policies are directly responsible for the increases in gas prices. This ain't the way to do it. You know, putting up the, the lowest gas price you can possibly find from the Trump administration and the highest gas price you can find out in California somewhere, as opposed to like Mississippi, where you probably pulled the first one, that's just dishonest. And it's not comparing apples to apples. And when people call you out on it, they won't be wrong. You can make a good case without having to mislead people, and then they have nowhere to go. Just show them the facts, and people will wind up getting it. Whenever you want to argue, and this is part of the reason that I, I made tactics in the first place, is because it is a place to talk about how to argue. If you are going to make an anti-Biden argument, or any argument, regardless of, of what stance you're trying to, hey, heck, you could do it the opposite way. You could make an anti-Republican argument this way. This would be a, a better way to argue. You always want to make sure that your argument is set in a good place. You want to make a position that is defensible. And so you think about, okay, if I were my opponent and I were trying to disprove what I'm saying, how would I do it? Because with the memes that we provided, it's really easy to disprove those. But if you do an actual apples to apples comparison, do a little bit of homework, then you've got a rock solid case and then you, it, it's very difficult to counter your argument. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. 
Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.